Good afternoon, everybody. How's it going this fine Friday? We made it to the end of another week, and I've got something on the mind when it comes to the Seahawks right now. Uh, me and the Hawks Nest talked about this a little bit in our stream last night, but I want to go into this a little bit more because this is important. And whether or not we do this the right way will have a huge, huge influence in whether or not our 2022 season is successful on defense. So, Clint Hurt. He had that press conference the other day. I already talked about a lot of, a lot of the things that he said, but it seems like Clint Hurt made some fans with that press conference. It seemed like people liked what he had to say for the most part, and I did too. It sounds like he's got some of the right ideas. And with Sean Desai on board, and with Carroll supposedly giving up the autonomy of the defense to guys like Hurt and Desai, it, it seems like there's some stuff here that could really work. Obviously, I think we all liked it when he said he doesn't want his defensive linemen dropping into coverage. Uh, we liked it when he said he was going to be more aggressive. There was some stuff to like. Now, uh, again, words are words. Actions are actions, and we're going to need to see actions before we completely buy into anything. But most of it sounded pretty good, but there's one thing that I want to spend a little bit of time on in this video specifically. Because there were a couple things that Clint Hurt said that theoretically I like. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I dislike anything that he said here, but... I just hope it's understood what it's going to take in order to make that work. Because it's one thing to say stuff, it's one thing to have the ideals of it in mind, but then it's another thing to correctly execute it. And I'm talking about some of the things that uh, Clint Hurt suggested would be changing in 2022. So the first thing is... He said that we would be moving to more 3-4 on defense. So basically suggesting that the 4-3 that has been in place on this defense for a long time was going to start morphing into more of a 3-4. Basically, he, he talked about having this defense be a hybrid, right? Where you have a defense that sometimes plays 4-3, sometimes plays 3-4, and they, they try to confuse the defense in that way. And he also said that the defense would be a little less zony in 2022. And these two things are, I, I don't dislike them, but here's the thing. You can't just say you're going to do it and then do it. You need to say you're going to do it and then get the right personnel to do it. So moving to a 3-4 on defense. Now, I have advocated in the past for switching to a 3-4 after we traded for Jamal Adams because Jamal Adams is going to be better in a 3-4 defense. I believe that. I think Jamal Adams' talents are somewhat wasted in the 4-3, and if you switch to a 3-4, you can get more of the good stuff from him and less of the not-so-good stuff. I'm not Again, I'm not one of these people who thinks Jamal is bad in coverage. I don't believe that, but... There's no doubt that he's better when playing downhill, when running towards the line of scrimmage, when he's up in the box. So, <clears throat> I like it. I like the concept. However, it does need to be understood what a 3-4 defense requires, even the hybrid. Because if you look at the players on this team right now who are currently under contract in 2022... You, you have to start thinking, how would they fit in in that hypothetical 3-4? Because let's, let's assume for a second that we're going to do a hybrid here, where you see some 4-3 and some 3-4. So maybe the 3-4, you would only be using like 20 to 25 snaps a game. Okay, how can we make that work? The defensive line. You need specific types of defensive linemen. Do we have a couple guys who could fit that mold? Um, yeah. Kerry Heider, he could play defensive end in a 3-4, I think. Um, I think Puna Ford could play on the line in a 3-4 because he's got the girth. Um, but do you have a nose tackle? Not right now. Could Al Woods or Brian Monet be that nose tackle? Eh, I don't know. You might need to bring in somebody from the outside, somebody who I never would have thought Seattle would have been interested in. You might need to bring in a specified 3-4 nose tackle to make that work. Okay. Um, 
what are some players on this team who wouldn't work in that 3-4 hypothetical defense? Because, okay, Daryl Taylor, he could be an outside linebacker in a 3-4, no problem. Benson Mayoa, yeah, he could do it too. I, I, I think Benson Mayo would take to a 3-4 pretty well. You've got some inside linebackers on this team who I think could play inside in a 3-4. Uh, Jordan Brooks could man one spot. The other spot could be Bobby or Barton or Rookie X or Free Agent Signing X. I think all that would be reasonable. I think that that all projects to something that would work. But what about a guy like a Carlos Dunlap? What is he doing in a 3-4? Nothing. What is a guy like Alton Robinson doing in the 3-4? I, I don't think that is good for his skill set. I don't think guys like that are going to fit in terribly well in a hypothetical 3-4 defense. So, if you are going to do it, you need to strongly consider adding another outside linebacker. Like, maybe you go get the Chandler Jones, which I know some of you guys want to do anyway, but it's not as easy as it sounds. You can't just say, okay, we're going to switch to a 3-4, so our defensive ends are going to play outside linebacker. Uh, Carlos Dunlap kind of got run out of Cincinnati because they switched to a 3-4, and he, he couldn't find a way to play in it. Guys like uh, Grady Jarrett, I think, went from playing in a 4-3 to a 3-4, and you saw his production really fall off a cliff last year when he uh, got away from that Dan Quinn-style defense. So it's... It, it's going to be a little bit of a tightrope walk to make it work. You're going to have some guys on this team that aren't going to fit in in that 3-4. So what are you going to do? Are you going to rotate guys in and out based on whether or not you're doing a 4-3 or a 3-4? Because then you're kind of giving off tells, right? If you've got Dunlap on the field and you know Dunlap isn't your 3-4 guy, the other team can look at that and go, oh, they're going to be in a 4-3 on this play. Because... To me, a big reason why Dunlap struggled last year was the fact that he was dropping into coverage so much when that's not his skill set. That's not something that he can do all that well. I think that you saw other players on this defensive line. We tried to force them into that uh, dropping back into coverage role from the de defensive line, and it just never really looked right. So if you're going to do a lot of 3-4 stuff, you might need to bring in some players who you otherwise wouldn't have really looked at this offseason. And some people are going to welcome that, guys like, you know, Chandler Jones. Maybe he would be good for our 3-4, hypothetically. Vaughn Miller, uh, Cam Jordan, maybe. But you're taking on extra expenses now. And we have a lot of stuff we need to do this offseason. The offense needs help, too. So I just hope that the solution is not, we're going to run 25 snaps a game in the 3-4, but we're going to force Dunlap and Alton Robinson to play outside linebacker on those downs. I don't think that's going to end well. you got a few guys on this team who will probably take to the 3-4 well. I think Puna, like I said, Kerry Hyder should fit right in. we got some linebackers who can do it, but not a lot of depth. And off the top of my head, we would need to add at least one genuine nose tackle. So... This kind of gives me pause, right? Because the idea is good. It's going to help Jamal Adams. It's going to help confuse opposing offenses. It's going to add a lot of stuff that people have not been expecting. And one thing I want to say is um, Matty F. Brown's been kind of all over this lately on Twitter, but the three, four principles are not as foreign to the Carroll defense as some people might expect, but you still need the right players. So if we get to this offseason and we are planning on running a lot of 3-4, you are going to have to say, okay, maybe we need to go spend big on a Vaughn Miller or Chandler Jones, and that's going to mean less money for these other places. So, hope you know what the plan is there, everybody. And then he said the second interesting thing was that the defense in 2022 would be less zony. Now, when he says less zony, I can only assume he means more manny. Because if you're not going to do zone, you're probably doing man. So again, we're talking about a hybrid defense here. And this is not anything that's brand new to the NFL. Um, we've seen hybrid defenses of part man, part zone, even sometimes on the same play. Uh, I think Rex Ryan used to do that stuff when he was with the Jets. We've seen Belichick kind of do stuff like that. But again, even though I like the concept of being less obvious what you're doing pre-snap. 
I like that idea, you got to get the right players for it. So if you're planning on running more man defense in 2022, then we've got some corners on this team that probably can't do it. And I, I'm mostly guys who are currently free agents, but Sidney D Jones and DJ Reed are zone corners. I don't really want to see them playing man. That sounds like a bad idea to me. So if the plan is really to play some, some man defense in 2022, you might actually have to go break the bank for a big-time corner because there are going to be some corners in this free agency class who are very good and they're going to command top dollar. If you're really going to try to do this, then you're probably going to need to break the bank on some of those guys. And if you're going to do that, in order to get the maximum bang for your buck, you're going to need to be playing man constantly. You can't have a $15 million a year corner or a $20 million a year corner and then say, okay, we're going to play you half the time, and the other half we're going to play our zone corners. And that would kind of have to be the model, because most players, even good players, are not going to be good at both. And yes, technically zone is easier to play than man, I get that. But if you want to get maximum bang for your buck, if you bring in a guy like a J.C. Jackson or a Stephon Gilmore, you need to be playing a lot of man. And if you do that, you're going to really diminish the value of a guy like uh, Sidney Jones and DJ Reed if you choose to bring them back. So <clears throat> things get a lot more complicated when you start adding in ideas like this. And I'm not resistant to it, but I'm a little concerned about what the approach will be. Because if the approach is just to say, oh, let's just bring back Sidney Jones, we're going to get Trey Brown back, and I'll, I'll give Trey Brown this, he can play man if he needs to. But I don't think Sidney Jones can. I don't think DJ Reed can. And you're you're also, in a way, not that this is the worst thing in the world, kind of wasting Carroll's cornerback talents if you get away from the zone stuff. So this, this recent statement from Clint Hurd on what the plans are on our defense in 2022, it's going to complicate this offense, I'm sorry, offseason significantly if it comes to pass. So, you know that old saying, jack of all trades? I can kind of see the Seahawks trying to become the jack of all trades this offseason on defense, right? Because we're going to do some of the 4-3, we're going to do some of the 3-4, we're going to do some of the zone, we're going to do some of the man, we're going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's hard. And the second half of that saying is typically master of none. Jack of all trades, master of none. It, it kind of makes me think of 2020. The Dallas Cowboys brought in Mike Nolan to coach their defense. And he tried to install a hybrid defense that did a lot of 3-4 stuff with players who had only played in the 4-3. It was a disaster. They were one of the worst defenses in the league for a good chunk of that season. They were terrible. The only guy on that defense who had experience playing in a 3-4 really was Alden Smith, and he played pretty well. But everyone else really struggled because they, they were not 3-4 personnel. So in that case, it was like not even jack-of-all-trades. That was just uh, garbage-of-all-trades. But if you're really trying to do a little bit of everything on defense then my concern would just be that you do, at best, be that jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none thing, because it's hard enough to find players, like, like the Hawks Nest said in our stream last night, it's hard enough to find players who are good at one thing, but it's really hard to find guys who can do multiple things. So, I kind of feel like that if we're going to switch to a 3-4, and if we're going to switch to a man defense, we need to actually do that. I don't, I don't know how I feel about the whole hybrid thing because even though we can turn over some of our personnel this offseason, we can't turn over all of it. So I want to see what this defense looks like in 2022, but my guard is up a little bit on statements like this. Let me know what you guys think down below. This is a complicated topic. Um, you're going to have to bring in very specialized personnel if you want to pull this off correctly. And it's going to cost money, and it might be money that we can't really afford to spend because we're thinking about this offensive line as well. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks, and 
It's going to be interesting. There's no doubt about that. I'll, I'll, I'll say that much. See you guys later.